Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi Masechet Eruvin. We are up to Perik Chet Mishnah Aleph. Today's Mishnah Yot should be Leiru Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana, Ranbai, Ben Eliyahu, Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen. The Mishnah begins, Ketzad Mishtatefin Batechumin. How do we make a communal Eruve Techumin so that anyone who wishes to rely upon the Eruv can do so? The Mishnah says, Maniach Et Echavit. A person sets down the barrel of food with which the Eruv is established. Now, the food used in an Eruv must be owned by those relying on it. Therefore, someone using <clears throat> his own food to establish a communal Eruv must first transfer ownership of the food to the members of the community. The rules for transferring ownership appear in the previous chapter, chapter 7, Mishnah Six. Now, the Mishnah speaks of making the Eruv with a barrel of food because barrels were routinely used for food storage during the times of the Mishnah. As Tosfot points out on page 82a, Mesechet Eruvin, the Mishnah continues again, Maniach et Echavit ve'omer, a person sets down the barrel of food with which the Eruv is established and he declares, Hare zeh lechol b'nei iri, lechol mi she'elech lebet ha'evel o lebet ha'mishter. Let this be for all the people of my town, namely for all those who will go beyond the original Tehum boundary to offer condolences at a house of mourning or to join a wedding banquet. And the commentators explain since those people need an Eruvet Tehumin to perform a mitzvah, an Eruv may be made for them. Now, it's not proper to establish an Eruv Tehumin. <coughs> Unless it is needed to fulfill a mitzvah, as the Gemara says on page 82a in Mesechet Eruvin. So for this reason, the Rav explains, the Mishnah states that, that the Eruv was being made so that people would be able to travel to comfort mourners or to join a wedding banquet located beyond their original Techum boundary. <coughs> And once the Eruv is made, whoever accepted the Eruv while it was still daytime on Erev Shabbat is permitted to rely on it on Shabbat and to walk to his destination. But those who accepted it on Friday night after dark are forbidden to rely on the Eruv and must remain within their original Techum boundary for the entire Shabbat. For we cannot make an Eruv after dark since an Eruv cannot take effect after Shabbat has begun. And the commentaries explain, an Eruv Techumin shifts a person's place of dwelling from his actual residence to the place where the Eruv was placed, allowing him to travel a full 2,000 amot beyond the Eruv. Since a person's place of dwelling for Shabbat is defined when Shabbat begins, the Eruv must be established on Friday while it is still daytime. Now, a communal Eruv Techumin is valid only for those who accept it, for the reason that we mentioned in chapter 7, <clears throat> Mishnah 11. However, as long as someone knows about the Eruv before Shabbat, even if he does not definitely decide to rely on it until after Shabbat begins, he may use the Eruv since his later decision is considered to take effect <clears throat> retroactively before Shabbat began. And that is the end of Mishnah Aleph. <clears throat> Mishnah Bet begins Kamahushiuro. What is the minimum amount of food required to establish an Eruvete Khumin? The Mishnah says Mizon Enough food to supply two meals for each and every person relying on it. Since the point of the Eruv is to establish a legal Shabbat residence for the user and must have enough food to sustain him for Shabbat. Now the commentators explain, although there is a mitzvah to eat three meals on Shabbat, the rabbis wanted to establish a lenient standard for Eruvet Techumin. They therefore set the Eruv food portions at the minimum number of meals a person needs on Shabbat, which is two meals, and not a number of meals he should be eating, which would be three. The Mishnah now defines the size of the meals that we are discussing. The first two opinions based their definitions on how much each Eruv user actually consumes at a meal. Mizono lachol velo le Shabbat divrei Rebbe Meir. Two meals refers to each Eruv's user's portion of food for his two daily weekday meals and not his portion for the larger Shabbat meals. These are the words of Rebbe Meir. Rebbe Yudah Omer le Shabbat velo lachol. Rebbe Yudah says it refers to his portion for the Shabbat meals and not for the larger weekday meals. 
וזה וזה מתכוונים להקל. And both Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda intend to rule leniently. And the commentators explain each bases his ruling on the meal at which the person eats less, though they disagree as to which meal that is. According to Rabbi Meir, a person generally eats less at weekday meals than at the tastier Shabbat meals. The amount of food needed for the Eruv is therefore the amount he eats at two weekday meals. Rabbi Yehuda maintains that since an extra meal is eaten on Shabbat, most people eat less at each Shabbat meal, and therefore the Eruv is based on what the person eats at his Shabbat meals. Now, both Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda agree that the amount of bread needed for Eruv Tichumin is subjective depending upon how much bread the individual ordinarily eats. If an individual eats less than average because he is elderly or sick, for example, then his eruv will be the small will be the amount of bread needed for his two small meals, even though this is less than an average person's meals. However, even a large eater does not need more than two small meals of an average person. If a person uses for his eruv a type of food such as meat, that is ordinarily served together with bread, he needs only the amount of that food he would normally eat at two meals together with bread. So meaning we wouldn't count the bread, we would count the amount of that food that he normally eats at two meals with bread. Whatever that food that he's counting is, if it's meat, that amount of meat that he would use for two meals. Now according to both Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda, the size of the Eruv is defined by the actual eating habits of the person using it. The next two views maintain that the size of the Eruv for any user is what an average person eats at two meals. The Mishnah now states the amount of food needed when bread is being used to establish the Eruv. Now, the food portions that we're about to present are measured by volume and price. The list that we are going to read from Art School State in Note 3 summarizes the volume measures and currency values that we will discuss. The volume measures are 1 se'a, which equals 6 kav, and 1 kav, which equals 24 eggs. That's volume measures. Coin values, again, I, whoever can see it inside, 1 se'a is 24 ma'a, a se'a is 4 dinars, and a dinar is 6 ma'a. So 1 se'a is 24 ma'a, and 1 ma'a is 2 Pudions, pundions. Rabbi Yochanan ben Broca Omer. Rabbi Yochanan ben Broca says, Mi kikar befundion me arba sin besela. Each user's portion is a loaf of bread sold for a pundion, a small coin, at a time when four se'a of wheat can be purchased for a sela, a large coin. And this equals the volume of six eggs. And the commentaries explain. Rabbi Yochanan ben Broca describes an average man's bread portion for two meals in terms of price. In a market where four se'a of wheat costs one se'a, a loaf whose volume is one quarter of a kav, which is the volume of six eggs, can be purchased for a pundion. This loaf, in Rabbi Yochanan ben Broca's opinion, is the amount of bread that an average person eats at two meals. And the calculation is as follows. Since a se'a is six kavs, Four se'a equal 24 kavs. And like we said, a se'a coin equals 24 ma'az. So when four se'a, which is 24 kavs of wheat, cost one se'a, which is 24 ma'a, one kav cost one ma'a. Now, there are two pundions to a ma'a. Therefore, a baker can buy a half kav of wheat for a pundion. But since he must cover the cost of grinding and baking and also make some profit, when he sells bread, he charges a pundion for a loaf made from only half that amount, meaning he charges a pundion for a loaf made from a quarter cob of wheat, and this is the equivalent of six eggs. It's a little complicated when you when I say it out, but whoever can read it inside just so you can visualize the different measurements, it'll help understand the Mishnah. Rabbi Shimon says, the portion for each person is two-thirds of a loaf, when three loaves of bread are made from a kav of wheat, since each loaf is one-third of a kav, which equals the volume of eight eggs, and only two-thirds of a loaf is required for the eruv, the required food portion per person equals the volume of five and one-third eggs. And the Rav explains, since there are 24 eggs to a kav, a third of a kav equals eight eggs. So in Rabbi Shimon's opinion, <clears throat> the minimum amount of bread needed for each participant's eruv is two-thirds of that, or five and one-third eggs.
<coughs> now, Rabbi Shimon's measure is therefore two-thirds of an egg less than Rabbi Yochanan and Ben Baroka's. Now, it comes out that Rabbi Yochanan and Ben Baroka and Rabbi Shimon disagree as to whether the loaf of bread under discussion equals the volume of six eggs or eight eggs. They also dis- disagree as to whether a full loaf is needed for each Eruv user, only two-thirds of a loaf, but that's not relevant to what we're going to discuss right now. Now the Mishnah notes that the dispute between Rabbi Yochum ben Rok and Rabbi Shimon about loaf size affects two other laws as well. Chetziah lebayt ha Half of the loaf that we discussed above relates to, the, to a law of a house afflicted with sarat. This Mishnah refers to a stone house upon whose walls a certain type of discoloration appears as described in Sevel Vaikra, chapter 15, uh, 14. <clears throat> Sukim 33 to 53, which makes the house Tameh. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Someone who enters the house becomes Tameh immediately, but his clothes do not, unless he stays long enough to eat a small meal. The Mishnah defines a meal for the purpose of this law as half of the loaf that we discussed above, namely, half of of a six egg loaf according to Rabbi Yochan ben Baroka and half of an eight egg loaf according to Rabbi Shimon. Now, although Rabbi Shimon previously defined two meals for the purpose of Eruv as two thirds of a loaf, so that a single meal is just one third of a loaf, that's only with regards to Eruv the Rav explains, where the rabbi is intended to be lenient. For the purpose of other laws, Rabbi Shimon defines a meal as half a loaf. Now, if someone enters such a house and stays for the length of time it takes to eat half a loaf of bread, the clothing that he's wearing becomes tameh as well. Obviously then the amount of time needed for the clothing to become tameh depends on the size of the loaf. So according to Rabbi Yochan ben Baroka, it's the amount of time it takes to eat half of a six egg loaf, while according to Rabbi Shimon, it is the time it takes to eat half of an eight egg loaf. And half of a half, the loaf discussed above, which is one quarter of it, relates to the law of making a person's body pasul for Tiruma. Now the term pasul, which literally means invalid, refers to a tameh person or object whose tuma is too weak to be transmitted further. Although food is not capable of transferring its tuma to people under biblical law, the rabbis decreed that someone who eats an amount of tameh food equaling one quarter of the standard loaf becomes pasul and may not eat Tiruma or Kodesh. Now, if food equal to one quarter of the loaf that we mentioned is tameh and a person eats it, he becomes disqualified pasul from eating tiruma. So here too, the amount of food that must be consumed to become pasul depends on the loaf size that we are discussing. According to Rabbi Yochan and Ben Baroka, it is the size of one and a half eggs. And according to Rabbi Shimon, it is the size of two eggs. Again, I understand, you know, Rabotai, the Mishnah was difficult, but whoever can open it inside, especially in the art school, elucidated or any other kahati, whatever you can, however you understand the Mishnah, it'll help a person to understand exactly what we were saying. And that is it, Rabotai, of today's Mishnah Yomi. Baruch Adonai Leolam. Amen v'amen.